Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Lois. I'm glad you called. You'll have to include me out tonight, Angel. I've sort of got a date with a blonde. What do I mean, sort of? Well, I'm not sure of her. You see, this gal likes to leave her man hanging. This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Double Exposure. Sunday afternoon and time for another thrilling adventure of the Falcon. But first, a word about another kind of adventure. An adventure in flavor. For right now at your grocer's, there's a wonderful new salad oil for use in your homemade salad dressings, your cooking, your baking. It's Kraft Salad Oil. The first salad oil ever offered for your home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft prepared dressings. Now, Kraft Salad Oil is more than just a new oil. It's a new kind of oil, a lighter-bodied oil to mix quickly and perfectly with all other ingredients. That's because it's not just refined. It's superfined by a special process created by Kraft. Yes, superfined to put new magic into the salad dressings you make yourself, into those wonderful chiffon cakes you pride yourself on, into every home recipe that calls for liquid shortening. Don't wait to get acquainted with Kraft salad oil. Look for the bottle with the beautiful label tomorrow at your grocer's. Get Kraft salad oil. Now, the case of the double exposure. It is early Sunday evening in New York, and a black chauffeur-driven sedan tears along one of the more deserted roads of the Bronx. In the back seat, a gentleman relaxes. His name is James Arcaro. Mr. Arcaro is a man who knows his way around, but at the moment he has begun to have his doubts. Say, Ralph, wasn't that Marshal Luke Parkway? I guess it was, Mr. Arcaro. Well, what are we doing here? I told you I wanted to go to Eileen Chambers' place. I must have misunderstood you. Wait a minute. You're not Ralph? No. Where is he? Let's just say he was indisposed, so he sent me in his place. Stop the car. Anything you say, Mr. Arcaro. What do you think you're doing? I'm going to open the door for you. What for? I'm not getting out. I got 500 bucks and a gun that says you're wrong. What's the idea? Ah, uh, you know... You're just trying to make conversation. All right, Arcaro, out of the car. Okay. Uh, tell me something, pal. Sure, but stay where you are and keep your hands at your side. Can I smoke? Yeah, but never mind reaching in your coat pocket. You can have one of mine. Here. You spare a light? Why not? Happy now? <sighs> yeah. I just wanted to get a look at you. I don't think it's going to do you much good, Mr. Arcaro. You never can tell. Your name's Ford, ain't it? Well, I'm flattered. I didn't think a big shot like you would know a peasant like me. 
Who are you working for? None of your business. You're one of Marvin Draper's boys, aren't you? Who? Marvin Draper. Ah, oh, come on, Ford, admit it. What do you got to lose? You all through with that cigarette? Were you the boy who took care of my partner, too? I don't know what you're talking about. Eddie Hutton. They tell me six months ago he took a dive in the Hudson River, forgot to come up. Now, how could that happen? Maybe because he was wearing a cement bathing suit. I wouldn't know, Mr. Arcaro. That's out of my line. Now, let's get this over with. Okay, Ford. But, but I'd like to ask you one other favor. What? Well, uh, maybe you hear I, I'm kind of proud of this face. I, I wouldn't like you to mess it up. Uh, how about uh, giving it to me in the back of the head? Huh? Oh, that's a reasonable request. I don't see why I can't accommodate you. Turn around. You ready? Wait a minute, Ford. Uh, can you uh, work a little closer? Why not? How's this? I, I can't see. I'm practically on top of you now. That's all I wanted to know. Let go, I said let go. <laughs> go be nice to people. Who's there? Open up, Ford. It's the police. Oh, sure. Just a second. Well, if it ain't Sergeant Corbett. Darned if it ain't. It's on your mind, Sergeant. Where were you at 9 o'clock tonight? Right here. Now, that's interesting. Why do you suppose Jimmy Arcaro told us you were with him? What? You're a pretty careless fella. Next time you leave a man for dead, you better take a saliva test. What are you talking about? He was found by a prowl car 20 minutes after you left. You're lying. I pumped... Go on, Ford. What were you going to say? You pumped two slugs in him? Sure. But he didn't die instantly. He was obliging enough to stick around for that prowl car and give him your name before he kicked off. Who are you trying to kid? Don't believe me, huh? And how would I know that our caro put up a battle before you killed him? You're crazy. And you're careless. You should wear overalls when you're working. What's that spot doing on your pants? Huh? Where? Right near the cuff. Don't tell me it's lipstick. Come on, get wise to yourself, Ford. You're through. Your only chance is to play ball with us. No. I'm telling you, yes. Did Marv Draper put you up to this? Come on, Ford. Don't be a patsy. Why should Draper get away while you burn? Draper had nothing to do with it. Then who hired you? I don't know. You don't know? Now help me, Sergeant. It's the truth. When I got home last night, there was an envelope under my door with five bills in it and a note. What kind of a note? Said if I knocked off our care, it would be another 500 tonight. Was there? No. Where's the original note? I tore it up. You're lying. Why should I? Listen, you punk. I want the truth. Who hired you to kill Jimmy Arcaro? I tell you, I don't know. Well, until I find out, I'm going to make it so hot for you that when you sit in that seat at Sing Sing, you'll think you're squatting on an icebox. Now, let's go. Yes? I'm looking for Mike Waring. Who? Well, you know, the one they call the Falcon. Well, what's your name, Angel? Eileen Chambers. Uh, are you wearing? Yes, I'm afraid so. Come in. Uh, take off your coat. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Uh, I was just thinking out loud. You wouldn't care for a drink? No. You sure? Positive. Well, you sound like a girl who knows her own mind. I do. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Well, what can I do for you, Eileen? Eileen? Uh, an efficiency expert once told me that by calling women by their first name, during a year I might save as much as... Uh... Three seconds. Well, well, there's no telling. He thought it might be as much as five. <laughs> What's in your mind, Eileen? Uh, uh, take a look at this. Certified copy of last will and testament of James Arcaro. Where'd you get this? From Mr. Arcaro's attorney. You benefit under the will? Read the last paragraph. Everything else I own, I leave to my good friend and partner, Eddie Hutton. However, in the event of Eddie Hutton's death before mine, then I desire my estate to go to my protege, Eileen Chambers. Ooh, not bad. You like it? I'm crazy about it. How much did a carol leave? What's your guess? Ooh, around a million. It's closer to two. Well, that's really worth shooting for, isn't it? Just what is that supposed to mean? Oh, when Joey Ford bumped Arcaro, he really did you a favor. I don't like that kind of talk, Mr. Waring. Mr. Arcaro was a very dear friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Were you related? No, he had no family. He was interested in my voice. Oh, I see. He thought I had the making of a great singer. 
Well, it just goes to prove you can't judge by appearances. Now, I never would have taken Jimmy for a patron of the arts, but... Uh, oh, well, that's beside the point. How do I come into this? Well, when I spoke to Arcaro's lawyer this morning, he showed a very strange reluctance to pay off. And you can't blame him, Eileen. Who can't? I think he's got something up his sleeve, and I want to find out what it is. Seems pretty obvious. Ford hasn't told the cops who he was working for. It was Marvin Draper. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, suppose it was you. What? Well, let's face it, Angel. Arcaro's lawyer must have thought of that possibility, and so will the police. Under Arcaro's will, you come into quite a bundle. Well, that was just an accident. Eddie Hutton would have gotten it all if he hadn't died before Jimmy. Mm -hmm, but he did, Eileen. And we mustn't forget it. According to the grapevine, Eddie Hutton died in October, about two months after this will was drawn. So you see where that places you. But that's just a temporary delay, isn't it? Once Ford confesses who hired him to kill Arcaro, I should have no trouble. None at all, Eileen. Unless, of course, he names you. Say, mister. Mister? Who, me? Yeah. Did you have to have a match with you? Uh, I think so. Here. Thanks. It's all right. Keep the whole pack. And if you want to keep your health, you'll behave yourself. What is this? Just walk around the corner. I got a car waiting. Why bother? I can get a cab. Don't be cute. You've read enough books to know why I'm keeping this hand in my pocket. Oh, yes. Forgive the oversight. I'll start walking. Now, look, friend, I don't want to be difficult, but you got the wrong boy. You're Mike Waring, the Falcon, aren't you? Yeah. Well, then don't worry about any mistakes. My brother wants to talk to you. Your brother? Yeah. He's waiting for you in the car. Here he is, Eddie. Nice going, Alex. Get in, Waring. I yeah, sure be glad to. All right, Alex, let's go. Right. Any place in particular you want Alex to drop you, Waring? Yeah, police headquarters would be fine. Well, I'm afraid that's a little out of our way. All right, now, look, what's this all about? Don't tell me you don't recognize me. No, I can't say I do. Ah, such is fame. To think only six months ago, my picture was all over the front pages. Hey, wait a second. Yes? You're Jimmy Acaro's partner, Eddie Hutton. You hear that, Alex? Yeah. Give the man a cigar. But I thought... I was at the bottom of the Hudson River. <laughs> you can't believe anything you read these days, can you? I heard Marvin Draper took care of you. Well, he was thinking of it, so I thought I'd better disappear. Yeah. What made you come back? I got a wire from Alex this morning telling me that Arcaro was dead. And you were working for Eileen Chambers. My, my, how news travels. Uh, if you got a fee out of her, you ought to return it. Why? Because you can't earn it. Under the terms of Jimmy's will, all his money goes to me. Uh, Miss Chambers won't get a dime now. So, uh, she'd better start saving her money. <laughs> Has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip. Tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip. Only one of its kind. Miracle Whip. The best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip is the only one of its kind because it's different, a different type of salad dressing made from a secret craft recipe. Miracle Whip combines the best qualities of boiled dressing and old fashioned mayonnaise. So it's truly distinctive and delicious with a flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. Try it, won't you? One taste will tell you why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Mike had his little interview with Eddie and Alex Hutton. And now, as we find him, he is relaying the information to his client. Four, one, seven, seven. <clears throat> yes? Hello, is that you, Eileen? Who is this? Mike Waring. I didn't think I'd hear from you for quite a while. Well, I told you I was a fast worker. <clears throat> I've got bad news for you, Angel. Bad news? As you know that two million bucks you were counting on? Well, don't. I don't understand you. 
Eddie Hutton is alive. <laughs> oh, so you're a comic, too. I'm not kidding. I saw him not more than an hour ago. All right, I give up. What's the gag? No gag. Don't talk like a fool, Mike. Eddie Hutton's at the bottom of the Hudson River. Oh, not by a long shot. I'm sorry, Eileen. Still, it was awfully nice knowing you. Uh, maybe we can get together on something else. Hmm? Listen, Waring, you won't get away with this double cross. Now, you're wrong, Angel. I don't believe in threats. Yeah, but well, before you make one, uh, hold the phone, huh? There's someone at my door. <laughs> Speak of the devil. I want to talk to you, Waring. There's no point in playing a repeat engagement, Hutton. I've already convinced you're alive. I was just telling Eileen. Is, is she here? No, I'm talking to her on the phone. Well, tell her. Tell her. Hey, what's the matter with you? Uh... Hutton. Hutton. Hello, Eileen, you still there? Yes, I'm not through with you. No, I'll say you're not. Forget what I told you about Eddie Hutton. But you said he wasn't dead. That was 20 seconds ago. Now he's gone and done it. Yeah? Marvin Draper. That's right. Who are you? Mike Waring. Well, come in. Thank you. Well, this is a pleasure, Mr. Waring. I've heard a great deal about you. I've heard a lot about you, Draper. Well, believe me, sir, I've done nothing to deserve it. Mm -hmm. You're just a little boy from down south came up to see the big city, huh? You're mocking me, Mr. Waring. You don't like that? No. So, if that's all you came here for... Uh, not quite. I... I thought we could talk a little business. I'm a private detective. Well, then you're wasting your time. I don't need one. You never know. Now, don't tell me that fellow who killed Arcaro confessed he was hired by me. No, but remember a man named Eddie Hutton? Mm, vaguely. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if the police want to talk to you about his murder. Well, they're a little late, aren't they? Yeah, well, they couldn't help themselves. His body just turned up an hour ago. Where? At my place. That's very amusing. I don't think so. You mean you can't see the comic possibilities in a man returning from the bottom of the Hudson? He wasn't at the bottom. He was in hiding. Oh, well, then the police did me a great injustice when they queried me about his disappearance. You think I ought to sue them for the embarrassment they caused me? No, I'd wait, Draper, because they're bound to cause you a lot more. They couldn't prosecute you then because they had no corpus delicti. What do you think they'll say when I tell them there's one in my apartment? Well, I'm not a gambling man, sir. But um, I wouldn't mind risking a few bob wagering. I know what they'll tell you. Yeah, what? That you're crazy, Mr. Waring. <laughs> now, you just see if they don't. Help me, Mike. You must be out of your mind to think I'd swallow a yarn like that. I tell you, Sergeant, Eddie Hutton's body is in my apartment. How about Judge Crater? He there, too? All right, all right. Be smart. But when your boys get back... What boys? Well, didn't you send a detail to my place after I called you? Are you kidding? Listen, Corbett, I'm not clowning. No, I don't think you are. What's your angle, Mike? Angle? You must have one. You working for Draper? Would I come here if I were? I represent a girl named Eileen Chambers. Who's she? Uh, Jimmy Carroll left her some dough in his will. Is that so? Oh, now, look, Corbett, she didn't kill him. You said she collected under his will. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Has Ford talked yet? Now, I'm beginning to think that story of his about the 500 bucks in the envelope is true. But you do believe Draper was behind that? Yeah. Okay, then this is your one chance to nail him. How? Through the murder of Eddie Hutton. You're going to start that again? Listen, Sergeant. Suppose Hutton was seen around town today. So? So this was a perfect spot for Draper to act. Somehow he poisoned him. Poisoned? Well, that's the only thing I could figure out. There wasn't a mark on the body. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. A man sits down with a guy he knows wants to kill him and lets himself be poisoned, just like that. All right, all right. Maybe he wasn't poisoned. I'm no doctor. Draper could have killed him a hundred different ways. Look, why don't we go over to my place and you can see for yourself. Okay, Mike, I'll go along with the gag. All I ask is one thing. I got no sense of humor, so be sure and tell me when to laugh. matter, Mike? Having trouble? No, I got it now. Uh, wait till I turn on the lights, sir. Where's Hutton? Are you blind? He's right there, but... Hey, he's gone. Is this where I start to giggle? I give you my word, Sergeant. He was right on the floor there. Very funny. I haven't laughed so hard. Oh, don't be a sap. 
You think I'd bring you up here on a wild goose chase? No, that's what bothers me. What do you mean? You're not the kind of a boy who goes in for practical jokes. You must have had a reason for this, and when I find out what it is... Wait a minute. What for? Did you bring that copy of Eddie Hutton's fingerprints with you? Yeah. But when Hutton keeled over, his hand hit the top of my desk. So what? So he wasn't wearing gloves at the time. Where's your fingerprint kit? Get me a glass of water. You need water to run the test? No, I'm thirsty. Oh, you... Well, hurry it up, will you? How you doing? Be through in a second. But if you don't find a copy of Hutton's prints on that desk, I'll eat it. Okay, Mike, start eating. This desk is absolutely clean. Hearty appetite, pal. This is Ed Hurley here again, friends. I do want to tell you something I'm sure you mothers especially will want to know. It's how to get the finest cheese food you can buy for your family. It's simple, really. Just be sure you buy Velveeta, Kraft's delicious pasteurized processed cheese food. Velveeta tastes good, and it's so good for you, too. For Velveeta is rich in important food values from milk, and it's as digestible as milk itself. So it's perfect any time for snacks, sandwiches, and grand hot dishes. Try it, won't you, Mother? Make Velveeta your handy helper. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta, the pasteurized processed cheese food of top quality, made by Kraft. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. A short while ago, Mike was dumbfounded when, after promising Sergeant Corbett the body of Eddie Hutton, he discovered he couldn't deliver, for the body was gone without a trace. And understandably enough, the good sergeant sees very little humor in the situation. Now, let me tell you something, Mike. You're not going to get away with this. If you think you can pull a stunt like this and make me the stool... Oh, you're out of your mind, Sergeant. Oh, that's good. That's good, coming from you. I tell you, Eddie Hutton's body was here. Draper must have removed it. If you had sent a squad when I called you... Don't give me that. No, you're talking like a child. Why would I dream up a story like that about Hutton? I told you how his brother Alex hijacked me this afternoon. Well, for your information, Alex Hutton is in Florida. He's what? Yeah, he was picked up there a couple of days ago for making book. Before they let him go, they wired us if we wanted him for anything. So, if you've got anything else to say... Shut up. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm sorry, Corbett. I didn't mean it that way. You see what I see? Where? On the carpet, under the sofa. That pocket comb? Yes, that's not mine. Someone must have kicked it there. Where's your fingerprint outfit? Listen, Mike. Well, what have you got to lose? All right. Now, don't touch it. You got enough powder? Yeah. Well? Can't you be quiet for a minute? Well, what do you know? There's a right thumb and forefinger on here. Look at this copy. They both belong to Eddie Hutton. Well, what did I tell you? I take it all back. Where's your telephone? Come in. Hello, Waring. Oh, so he was in Florida, huh? Say, what goes on here? You're just the boy I want to see, Alex. Sergeant, meet Alex Hutton. Is he the one? Yeah, he's the one. I want to talk to you, Alex. Well, that makes us even, because I want to talk to you. Where's my brother? Eddie. Who did you think I meant? He's not here. I can see that for myself, but where is he? He left my place two hours ago and said he was coming here. Well? Well, he hasn't been back since. That's easy to understand, Alex. He's dead. I don't like those kind of jokes, Waring. It's the truth, Alex. I'm asking you for the last time. Where's my brother? I told you he's dead. You just won't be serious, will you? I... All right, you better put away the rod, Alex. This man's a sergeant with the New York police. Yeah, and I got a badge, too. If I you asked like... you a question, Waring. And I answered it to the best of my ability. Eddie's dead, and you better reconcile yourself to it. Who killed him? I don't know. Maybe Marvin Draper. Yeah, or maybe it was your client, Eileen Chambers. Why should she? I suppose you forgot all about Jimmy Arcaro's will. Now, with Eddie out of the way, she's going to be sitting pretty. Well, you've got a point there. Well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret, friend. Eileen isn't going to live to spend a dime of that money. You better watch your step, Alex. They can burn you for this. Shall I tell you something, Waring? If I can get Eileen, it'll be worth it. I'll be seeing your friends. Well, if 
it isn't Alex Hutton. You're surprised, Eileen? Not particularly. Come in. Now, let me have your coat. No, no thanks, baby. I don't think I'll be staying very long. That's where you're wrong, Alex. Uh, what's the idea of the gun? I'm just beating you to the draw. Are you crazy? Well, wasn't that what you came here for? Of course not. Well, then why do you suppose Mike Waring made up the story? Mike Waring? That's right. You talked to him? Uh-huh. How? <laughs> for a smart boy, Alex, you made an awful boner. Didn't you ever hear of the telephone? Great invention. He didn't call Oh, you. yes, he did. He should be here any minute. Oh, there, that's probably him now. Uh, come in. Hi, Eileen. Hello, Mike. Who is your friend? Huh? Oh, that's right. You haven't met, have you? Eileen, this is Sergeant Corbett. Glad to know you, Miss Chambers. Thanks. Isn't she a great gal, Sergeant? Look how she's in command of the situation. Just like the Marines in Korea. Aren't you proud of me? Oh, Angel, what a question. You're all in this together. You better be careful with those accusations, Alex. Let me have the cannon, Eileen. What for? Well, that's an awfully big gun for a little girl like you to carry. Oh, I don't mind. Don't think I'm swallowing this routine, because I'm not. You're all partners. Where's our motive? Two million bucks that Jimmy Arcaro left my brother. Sure. You hired Ford to kill Jimmy, and then one of you poisoned Eddie. You're wrong, Alex. Yeah, but then where is he? Where he's been for the past six months at the bottom of the Hudson. What are you babbling about? That guy who died over at my place was a plant you dug up for the occasion. Are you nuts, Mike? Next you'll be saying he hired Ford to kill Jimmy Arcaro, too. Why, Sergeant, how did you guess? You took the words right out of my mouth. Now, admit it, Eileen, isn't this cozy? I still don't see why we couldn't have brought your friend along. My friend? Mm Mm-hmm, Sergeant Corbett. I think he's cute. Oh, really, Eileen? You disappoint me. Why, if I told you some of the things I know about Corbett... I'd much rather you told me about Alex Hutton. Oh, believe me, he's a much nicer guy. Even though he did hire Ford to kill Jimmy Acaro. Why? Well, so that Acaro's will would go into effect. You see, under its terms, if Eddie Hutton was alive at the time, he'd come into everything. That's why Alex showed up with his brother's double. Well, why did he kill him later? Well, the man had performed his purpose. All Alex wanted to establish was that his brother lived longer than a cow. In that way, your interest would be wiped out, and everything would then go to Eddie Hutton. Well, how did that affect Alex? Well, if Eddie Hutton survived a cow, the money would go to Eddie's next of kin. Not to me? Nope. So, naturally, Alex tried to convince us that his brother had lived longer than a cow. Once he had me convinced, he removed the body. Why? Well, he couldn't afford to let it be found again, because then it would be easy to prove the man was a phony. But with my story that I had talked to Eddie Hutton today, plus the fingerprints on the pocket comb he planted in my apartment, Alex had all he needed to substantiate his case. Well, what was his mistake? Oh, well, he made several. For one thing, he knew that the man who died in my place was a victim of poisoning. Well, how could he know that when he'd never seen the body? Then his hokey threat about killing you was a boner, too. Don't you think he meant it? No, of course not. He did that for effect. He wanted to show us he was all broken up over his brother's death and that he felt you were responsible. (laughs) You don't really believe he forgot we could telephone ahead and warn you. He wanted us to stop him. Now, Alex wasn't taking any chances of getting in trouble with two million bucks in sight. Which now belongs to me? Which now belongs to you. Now, does that take care of all your questions? All but one. Just ask it, Angel. What time is it? Uh, Ten o'clock. Why? I don't want to be late for my appointment with uh, Sergeant Corbett. Oh, 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 oh. you don't mean that. Uh Uh-huh. He's waiting for me at the Belvedere. Well, what's he got that I haven't got? Me and two million dollars. Good night, Mike. Friends, America's defense program has placed on the Red Cross one of the greatest responsibilities it has ever had to assume. Now, in addition to -to day-to-day aid to the sick and injured, the Red Cross must extend its services to the men of our growing armed forces in camps and hospitals, at home and overseas. Now, too, the Red Cross must recruit, train, and equip millions of home defense volunteers in first aid and home nursing. And the Red Cross system of blood banks must be expanded to meet greater civilian and military needs. That's why Red Cross needs your help. By giving as generously as you can to the Red Cross, you are helping to mobilize for the defense of your family, your community, your country. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.
Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, June. I was just thinking about you, Angela. The theater tonight? No, I'm sorry. I'm working on a case. Of course, I know those tickets were hard to get, but so was the murderer. And I've got a date with one in exactly half an hour. This is Ed Hurley, friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Rich Racketeer. Before we join the Falcon in his latest adventure, I'd like to tell you folks about Kraft's golden cheese food, Velveeta. Velveeta is such good eating. Just taste that grand, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And Velveeta is so good for you. It's rich in important food values from milk itself. For swell-tasting snacks, for good, hearty sandwiches, for thrifty, easy, hot dishes, it's smart to keep stocked with Velveeta. Get it tomorrow in the handy quarter-pound package or in the economical two-pound loaf. The cheese food of top quality. Velveeta is made only by Kraft. And now, the case of the rich racketeer. It's Sunday afternoon in New York City. A cab pulls up in front of a large Central Park West apartment building and two men get out. One of the men is big, beefy, and florid, while the other is slim and quick-moving. The two men hurriedly enter the building and ride the elevator up to the 10th floor, where florid face leads the way to one of the apartments and opens the door. Flo? Hey, Flo? Guess my wife's not home yet. Come on, Garland. Come on in. Let's get the door. Mm, Excellent idea, Sullivan. Excellent. Wait there and leave your hat and coat on. Won't take me but a second to write a check. Check? Yeah, check. I think I'd rather have cash, Sullivan. I was much too good in court this afternoon to warrant a check. Okay, so you were good. You were swell. You were better than usual. And you're still the best business finagler in New York. But you're going to get a check. Finagler is a nasty word. Almost as nasty as racketeer. Yeah, but racketeer is better, Garland. You see, in my business, you don't have to pretend to be something you're not. But you do have to be smart. Yeah, that's right. You have to be smart. Now then, here's your check. Take it and blow. I got a date in a little while. Only a thousand dollars? You're lucky to get that much. Hey, hey, don't tear that up. Why, you cheap chiseling punk. I saved your fat neck this afternoon. An income tax evasion charge is the only way they catch guys like you. And I cleared you. I got you off scot-free because there wasn't any evidence of the money you made. They could have ruined you. Yeah, but they didn't. No, they didn't. And I'll tell you why they didn't. Because I advised you not to keep any records or books. I told you to keep your profits on hand in cash and not to keep it in any banks. So what? So I want my share in now and I want it in cash. I know you've got more than 300 grand salted away. You're crazy, Colin. No, no, I'm not. I know you've got that money, Sullivan, and I want my share. I want it right now and fast. I want $30,000, and I want it in cash. Oh, why, you stupid little... <clears throat> Say, hey, that, that's the way you want to play it, eh? That's the way, Sullivan. I'm not bluffing. It's loaded, and I'm not afraid to use it. So if you want to enjoy your freedom, hand over the thirty grand. Now, look, Garland, be reasonable. Put that gun away. Not a chance. But you're wrong. I swear you are. I'm broke. That $1,000 check I just wrote will practically wipe me out. <laughs> you expect me to believe that? It's true. Now, listen. I know you deserve a bigger fee, but I can't give it to you now. Later, I'll try... Oh, quit stalling, Sullivan. Where's the money? I know you got it. I dumped it in an oil deal out west. I thought I could really clean up, but something went wrong. (laughs) You never took a chance in your life, and an oil well is a gamble. You're a sure thing player. Come on, Sullivan. Getting tired of holding this gun. Where's my $30,000? I tell you, Garland, Get it quick, Sullivan, or I'm going to pull this trigger. What the... Larry, what in the world? Look out, Flo. It's done, Mike. No, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. Oh. Oh. That's better. I'll just keep this gun as a souvenir. Now get out of here before I break it over your head. What's going on here, anyway? Shut up. Okay, Garland, get going. You made a mistake, Mr. Sullivan. A big mistake. 
I want that 30 grand, and I intend to get it. That little bum might have killed me with his gun if you hadn't opened the door and banged into him. That's too bad. If I'd known, I'd have waited outside in the hall. What? You heard me. What's eating you? You are. Come on, come on. Spill it. What's on your mind? A blue-eyed, baby-faced little blonde named Bonnie Shaw. Bonnie? What are you talking about? Get wise to yourself, Larry. Did you really think you were kidding me? Don't you think I know where you've been spending your evenings? Now, wait a minute, Flo. You don't know what Take you're talking... Take your don't... hands off me, you big ape. I've been a sap for a long time, but now you're going to pay and pay plenty. How did you find out about Bonnie and me? A little bird told me. I said, how did you find out? And I said a little... You're going to be sorry for that, Larry. Very sorry. Yeah? But not as sorry as you're going to be. Your little bird didn't tell you quite enough. Sure, I've got a girl named Bonnie Shaw, and I'm nuts about her. I'm going to divorce you and marry Bonnie just as soon as possible. Really? And I got more news for you, too, baby. Just in case you think you're going to hook me. I'm broke. I've been wiped out completely. You can't get a dime out of me. That's too bad, isn't it? Yeah, it's a shame. I feel so bad about it, I'm have to bust out crying if I hang around here any longer. So get away from that door and let me out. Sure, Larry, I'll let you go. But not with Bonnie Shaw. Try and stop me. Wait, Larry. You're forgetting something, aren't you? Now look, Flo. Put that gun down. Why, Larry, I only wanted to hand it to you. It belongs to your lawyer friend. Don't you want to give it back to him? Why, why yes. Maybe I'd better. No. On second thought... I don't think he needs it as badly as I do. You? Yes, darling. I've just thought of a wonderful use for it. Well, what are you going to do? Why, can't you guess, Larry? I'm the forgotten middle-aged wife who's been dropped without a cent. I'm going to the bedroom and blow my brains out. Ho, 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 don't kid me, baby. You'd never do that. You're so right, darling. I'd never, never do that. Sorry I'm late, Bonnie, but... Nice little hideaway you got here, Sullivan. Miles from the city. Woods all around. Lake out front. You couldn't have picked a sweeter love nest. Who are you? My name's Shaw. I'm Tom Shaw. Shaw? Yeah, I got a sister named Bonnie. Mean anything to you? You're Bonnie's brother? That's right. Where is she? She'll probably be along in a few minutes. Say, I don't get this. Bonnie didn't tell me you'd be here. She didn't know it. And what are you doing here? I'm telling you to stay away from Bonnie. Maybe she'll have something to say about that. Bonnie's just a kid. She doesn't know what she's doing. Now, look, Shaw. You got the wrong idea. I'm crazy about Bonnie. We're in love. We're going to get married. No, you're wrong, Sullivan. And even if you meant it, I'd die before I'd let her throw herself away on a grafting racket here like you. Guy who's old enough to be a father who's already married. You told my wife about Bonnie. Sure, I told her. Why, you little... My jaw. Next time, it won't be your jaw. It'll be your neck. Now get out of here and stay out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get out, Sullivan. But I'm coming back with a gun. Operator. I want to call New York City. What number, please? You'll have to look it up. I want to make a person-to-person call to Mike Waring, the private detective who's known as the Falcon. You know, Angel, you got the bluest eyes. <laughs> yeah, they go so well, but... Oh, Hand me the phone, will you, Angel? Don't answer it, Mike. Let it ring Oh, all right. Hello? Uh, yes? Is this Mike Waring, the Falcon? Yes, it's the Falcon speaking. Must be something wrong with this connection. For a second, I thought... Oh, never mind what you thought. Just tell me what you want. I want to hire you. Right now? Yes. Why? Are you working on something else? Uh, yes, I am. Well, then drop it. 
This job's important to me, and I'm willing to pay plenty if you'll come out here right away. Where are you? In my cottage at Tallow Lake. Well, it's 10.30 now. I couldn't get there much before midnight. I know that. All right, what's the job? I'm working on a very important deal at the moment, and it's absolutely necessary to keep my movements secret. I'm pretty sure that somebody's been following me this evening. I want you to find out who it is. You say money is no object, Sullivan? None at all. Okay, keep talking then. Just exactly where is this cottage of yours? Hello? Mrs. Sullivan? Yes, who's this? The same guy who called you this morning. You mean about my husband? That's right. Who are you, anyway? Never mind who I am. I just found out where your husband is meeting Bonnie Shaw. Where? In the last cottage down the road on Sallow Lake. He's there now waiting for him. If you're interested in keeping him, you better go out and bring him home right away. And if I'm not interested? Well, in that case, you might drop him a farewell note. Because I have a hunch he's going on a long, long trip. <laughs> It's lighter bodied. It's super fined. It's Kraft Salad Oil, the first salad oil ever offered for home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft prepared salad dressings. Yes, there is something new under the sun at your grocer's right now. A new salad oil, Kraft Salad Oil. The first salad oil ever offered for home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft prepared dressings. Wait till you try it in those wonderful salad dressings you make yourself. Those light-as-air chiffon cakes you're so proud of in all your special recipes that call for liquid shortening. For Kraft Salad Oil is more than just a new oil. It's a new kind of oil. Super fine for better blending by a special new Kraft process. Because it's lighter-bodied, it mixes perfectly with all ingredients. Puts new magic into dressings, cooking, and baking. Don't wait. Put this new salad oil on your shopping list right now. Remember, it's lighter bodied. It's super fine. Get Kraft salad oil tomorrow at your grocer's. Look for the bottles with the beautiful labels. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. It's an hour and a half later. Mike Waring has just stopped his car outside Larry Sullivan's secluded cottage at Tallow Lake. The light is on in the living room, but the house and countryside are strangely quiet. Mike walks up to the front door and knocks. There's no answer, no sound from inside. He opens the door and stops suddenly. Across the room with her back pressed tensely against the closed bedroom door stands a beautiful, young, very frightened blonde. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. When I knocked and nobody answered, I'm I... am not scared. <laughs> you better try again, Angel. It's not that cold in here. I don't understand. You're trembling. Why? I don't know. Okay, have it your way. Where's Sullivan? Larry? I don't know his first name. He called himself Sullivan. He hired me to come out here. Why? Said he needed a detective. You're a policeman? No, I'm a private detective. Hey, what's the matter with you, anyway? Where's Sullivan? He, he's not here. He's gone. He won't be back. Please, you better go now. Now, wait a minute, Angel. Not so fast. What's behind that closed door? It's, it's just the bedroom. Who's in there? Nobody. Nobody at all. Please. Now, don't try to kid me, Angel. If Sullivan's changed his mind about needing a detective, he's not going to brush me without getting out his checkbook. No. No, please don't open the door. <laughs> no wonder you got the shakes. What gives me the jitters, too? <laughs> this Sullivan? Yes. With a bullet hole in the back of his head. Larry. <laughs> okay, you can cut out the act. I'm not impressed. I... Yes, where's the gun? The gun? The gun you killed him with. It's not here. Where is it? You think I killed Larry? You just try to get rid of me. You're scared, silly, and you knew he was in there. No. No, you're wrong. I didn't shoot Larry. I just got here a few minutes ago. I found him in there. I was frightened. I didn't know what to do. Why were you tailing him tonight? I don't understand. He told me on the phone that somebody was following him. That's why he hired me. He wanted me to find out who it was. I wasn't following Larry. 
I came here to meet him tonight. I, I loved him. We were going to be married just as soon as his wife divorced him. He already had a wife? Yes. She killed him. She must have found out about us and come here tonight. That's possible. She might have been the person who was following him. Of course, it must have been his wife, don't you see? Well, not yet, but a little outside help might clear it up. Where's the phone? What are you going to do? Call the police. No, no, wait. I I mean, you've got to understand about us, about Larry and me. Yeah, sure, sure, I know. You can tell me all about it after I put in this call. No, please don't call them until... look, Angel, you can't pump bullets at a ball spot without letting the police in on the fun. Somehow, I don't think they'd like it at all. Bonnie Shaw, hmm? Yes, Mr. Waring. I've told you the truth. Larry and I love each, loved each other. I had no reason to kill him. Sullivan told me he was working on some sort of big deal. Do you know anything about it? No, he never told me about his business. What about Sullivan's wife? Did you know... Th- What's the matter? Just heard somebody out on the porch. Keep talking, Angel. I'm... Sure, she must have found out about us. What is he looking for somebody? Tom, what are you doing here? You know this fellow? Oh, yeah, of course I know him. He's my brother. Bonnie, you've got to listen to reason. Come home with me. You can't throw yourself away on a no-good racketeer like Sullivan. Tom, you heard. What happened to your jaw? I came here earlier tonight to talk to Sullivan, but he couldn't see things my way. We had a fight and he hit me. Is that why you shot him? Why? Sh- Wait a minute. What's going on here? Who are you? A lot of people call me the Falcon. The Falcon? Bonnie, what's happened? Where's Sullivan? He's lying in there on the bedroom floor with a bullet hole in the back of his head. He's dead? Definitely. Let go of me. What's the idea? I just wanted to see if you had a gun. What, are you satisfied? Well, no, you could have thrown it away out there in the woods. You think I killed Sullivan? You said you had a fight with him tonight. Yes, we had a fight, but I didn't kill him. I was plenty sore when he threw me out, but I cooled off after I called his wife. You called Sullivan's wife tonight? Yes. Why, you contemptible little... All right, little... take it easy, Angel. I did it for your own good, Bonnie. And Sullivan's wife did know about him and Bonnie. Of course she knew about... Wait a minute, maybe she did it. Of course she did it. Why did you come back here, Shaw? Well, after I called Sullivan's wife, I got to thinking. I I thought that if she came out here, maybe the two of us could break this up. Oh, sure. The police are going to love that story. Did you call the cops? Yes, of course. They'll be here any minute I'm getting out. They're not going to find me here. Not so fast. Get out of my way! You knocked him out. Yes, well, he'll get over it. And it might jar him into telling the truth when the police wake him up for a chat. gone away from Mr. Gardner and told him to get out. Did you tell the police about that? Well, certainly I told them. But they seemed to think that Tom Shaw was the killer. Of course, they said they'd question Mr. Garland this morning. Mm-hmm. Did you leave this apartment last night after your husband went out? Why, no. Could you prove that? I don't think so. Why? What are you driving at, Mr. Waring? Your husband was running around with another woman and you had just found it out. Do you think I killed Larry? Your motive is even better than the others. Oh, that's ridiculous. I... I couldn't kill anybody. You seem to be taking your husband's death pretty calmly. No tear-stained handkerchiefs or swollen eyes. Why should I pretend? He meant nothing to me anymore. I didn't even mind the fact that he had this girl, Bonnie Shaw. You weren't jealous? Certainly not. I knew he was going to leave me, but I didn't care at all. I'll be honest with you, Mr. Waring. If I could have gotten money from Larry, I might have tried to hang on to him. Or at least make him pay plenty to get rid of me. But he was wiped out. He didn't have a dime. Your husband was broke? Yes. He told me so last night, just before he went out. So you see, he was of no more use to me. I actually was glad he was going to leave me, but I certainly had no reason to kill him. I see. Oh, excuse me. Yes, of course. Mr. Garland. Oh, forgive me for calling so early in the morning, Mrs. Sullivan. I want to see Larry before he went out. I'm sorry about that trouble we had last night, and I want to apologize. You, you don't know about... Uh, is this the business manager you were telling me about? Yes, this is Mr. Garland. Well, what's wrong, Mr. Sullivan? Where's Larry? He was murdered last night. Larry's dead? Yes. Why, well, that's terrible. I had no idea. Did you read the morning papers? No, no, you see, I was upset about that quarrel last night, and I wanted to hurry over here as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. That quarrel last night gives you a pretty swell motive, darling. Uh, I, I didn't even know about the murder. Yeah, well, you could be lying about that. No, I'm not lying. But you did threaten him. Well, I was only bluffing. He owed me money and I wanted it. I swear I didn't shoot Larry. I couldn't have done it. They took my gun away from me. It's still here. There are other guns. Well, I tell you, I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Tell me about this money you say Sullivan owed you. 
Well, I, I did some financial work for him, and I felt he owed me a much larger fee than he was willing to pay. Naturally, that made me angry, and I guess I lost my head. I had the gun in my pocket. Why? And I, well, I always carry it. I have a license for it. There are certain people who have threatened me from time to time. Okay, so I... okay. So you pulled the gun on Sullivan. Yes, yes. I, I, I thought I might frighten him into paying me what I wanted. It did frighten him, and he told me the truth. The truth? Yes, he was broke. He literally couldn't pay me. At first, I didn't believe him, but he finally convinced me that he was telling the truth when Mrs. Sullivan came in unexpectedly and, and gave him the chance to grab the gun. Did uh, Bonnie Shaw know that Sullivan was broke? Who was she? Or didn't you know Sullivan had a young girlfriend? No, no, I had no idea. I, I mean, I only knew him professionally. He never discussed his personal life with me. Mr. Waring, isn't it just possible that... That Bonnie Shaw killed your husband? Yes. That's why I wondered if she knew Sullivan was broke. He might have been stringing her along, telling her he was rich, and last night she may have found out the truth. <laughs> Hello, Mike. What? What are you doing in my apartment, Bunny? Mike, I've been trying to find you all morning. <laughs> you don't waste much time, do you, Angel? It was Mr. Waring last night. Oh, I, I'm i sorry. It just slipped out. Uh-huh. Well, make it a habit, huh? I like the intimate touch. You look tired. Yeah, I know. Working for nothing always wears me out. I don't understand. I've been using my talents out of pure curiosity this morning. Sullivan hired me last night, but he didn't pay me any money. Then maybe you let me hire you. You? Yes, Mike. You've got to help Tom. Have they arrested him? Not yet, but they, they held him for questioning all night. He denies the murder, so they had to let him go this morning because of lack of evidence. But I want to hire you to find the real murderer. Are you sure about that? Of course. And please, Mike, please let me hire you to clear Tom. I cost money, you know. I don't have very much, but I'll, well, I'll try. That mink coat you're wearing doesn't exactly look like a ticket to the poorhouse. <laughs> don't let this coat fool you. I didn't pay for it. Larry gave it to me as a present. Sullivan gave you that coat? Yes. When? About a week ago. Why, what's wrong? Sullivan claimed he was broke. But that's ridiculous. He had lots of money. In fact, he told me he just made a tremendous killing in some sort of business deal, and that's why we... That's why you what? N no, not nothing. It... Now, now, come clean, Angel. If you want my help, you've got to tell me the truth. <sighs> All right, Mike. I'll tell you the truth. Larry wasn't broke. I know. We... You see, we weren't going to wait for his divorce. We were going to South America together. In fact, he already had the steamer tickets. And a stack of money in cash? Yes. You know where that money is? No, Mike, I don't. I swear I don't. You wouldn't lie to me, would you, Angel? No, Mike, I wouldn't lie to you. I couldn't. You know that, darling. <laughs> well, that's a nice try, but you'll have to do better than that. All right, wrap that mink around your lovely shoulders. We're going treasure hunting. Where to? Out to Sullivan's Cottage on Tallow Lake. Miracle Whip. Has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip. Tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip. Only one of its kind. Miracle Whip. Best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip is the only one of its kind. Because it's a different type of salad dressing, made from a secret craft recipe. Miracle Whip combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. So it's truly distinctive and delicious. With a flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. Try it, won't you? One taste will tell you why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. <laughs> Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Mike set out for Tallow Lake with Bonnie Shaw. Now they've arrived. Mike, look. Yeah, it looks like a cyclone hit the place. Well, I'm not surprised. The murderer was here searching for the money. Yes, of course. And he's beaten us to it. He must have found it if Larry had it hidden here. Well, don't be too sure about that, Angel. You don't think the money was here? Oh, yes, I'm sure it was here. And I think it still is. But why? Well, look at this room. Everything is torn up, drawers are empty, pillows slashed, rugs thrown back. Nothing's been overlooked. I don't understand. Well, that's simple, Angel. If the place was only partly torn up, it might mean the killer had found the money. But everything in here has been gone over carefully, and more than once. That means he hasn't found it yet. Then Mikey may still be here. 
Maybe we interrupted him. Yes, maybe, but I've got another idea I like a lot better. What? The murderer knew about the money, but didn't get a chance to search for it last night after killing Sullivan. So this morning early, the killer came back out here, went over the cottage, but couldn't find the money. So the murderer got the bright idea of hiring me, a detective, to help find the missing cash. Mike, you don't think that I... After all, Angel, you knew about the money and the others didn't. Oh, Mike, the others could have known. Even Tom could have known about it. Yeah, sure, but I don't... (gasps) Down on the floor, quick! What happened? Well, guess I owe you an apology, Angel. We did interrupt the murderer and he just tried to kill me. And he's out there in the woods. He may try to come up here. Hold it. What is it? Listen. Car. Yeah, he must have hidden it in the woods. He missed once and decided not to try again, so... Oh. What's the matter? <laughs> look over there on the floor. The wall mirror. The bullet smashed it. Yes, and look what was hidden behind the glass. An envelope. Uh-huh. An envelope. And full of thousand-dollar bills. Larry's money. <laughs> oh, brother, that's irony for you. The murderer couldn't find it, but his bullet did. He's not a very good shot. (laughs) Wait a minute. Shot. What? Thanks, Angel. You just told me something I should have known three hours ago. What do you mean? The murderer. I know who it is now. Who, Mike? Sullivan's lawyer, Arthur Garland. Uh, Would you like a drink now? Not until you tell me how you knew Garland was the killer. Well, now that the police have caught up with him, I guess I can. You see, Garland made one little slip. A slip that I didn't recognize until you mentioned the word shot. Then it clicked suddenly. What? Well, you see, when I talked to Garland this morning, he claimed he didn't even know about the murder. Yes. Well, neither Mrs. Sullivan nor I told him any of the details, yet he knew Sullivan had been shot. He said, I swear I didn't shoot Larry. Well, Sullivan might have been stabbed, poisoned, or bashed over the head for all he knew. How else would Garland have known Sullivan had been shot unless he himself had done the shooting? Mike, you're wonderful. (laughs) I'd never have thought of that. Well, you're not a detective, Angel. No. But I might like to be a detective's wife. All right, swell. I know a couple of boys in the force who'd love a wife like you. (laughs) Okay, Mike, you win. (laughs) But you can't blame me for trying, can you? No, not me. I like persistent women. Oh, good. I'll have that drink now. Okay, Then I promise to try again. Do you like rich, delicious chocolate-flavored malteds? Well, you can make a malted just like that right in your own kitchen with Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk. Just make a tasty paste of Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk and a little milk in the bottom of a big glass. Fill the glass with chilled milk Stir it once more, and there. A Kraft malted is mighty nourishing, too, because it's filled with all the food values in milk. Get a jar of Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk from your grocer and enjoy a Kraft malted often. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon. Starring Les Damon. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Doris. Uh, Thanks for the call, but tonight is out for me. I'm working for a businessman who has killed off his competition, and the question is, did he do it literally? This is Ed Hurley, friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Widow's Gorilla. Sunday afternoon and time for another thrilling adventure of the Falcon. But first, a word about another kind of adventure. An adventure in flavor. For right now at your grocer's, there's a wonderful new salad oil for use in your homemade salad dressings, your cooking, your baking. It's Kraft Salad Oil. The first salad oil ever offered for your home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft prepared dressings. Now, Kraft Salad Oil is more than just a new oil. 
It's a new kind of oil, a lighter-bodied oil to mix quickly and perfectly with all other ingredients. That's because it's not just refined. It's superfined by a special process created by Kraft. Yes, superfined to put new magic into the salad dressings you make yourself, into those wonderful chiffon cakes you pride yourself on, into every home recipe that calls for liquid shortening. Don't wait to get acquainted with Kraft Salad Oil. Look for the bottle with the beautiful label tomorrow at your grocer's. Get Kraft Salad Oil. Now, the case of the widow's gorilla. It's late Sunday night in the New York apartment of novelty manufacturer Raymond Orsatti. Orsatti is the stout middle-aged man who at the moment is opening a desk drawer in the study of the apartment, out of which he takes a revolver. He breaks the revolver, sees that it's loaded, closes it, and is raising it to his head when he hears a sound behind him. He turns to see his wife, Lois, standing in the doorway. Raymond, what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? Give me that gun. Stay away from me. Raymond, let me have it. I stay away or you'll really get hurt. Won't you listen to reason? What can you say? Business is ruined. Kendrick's got the best of me. There's nothing left. Are you just going to quit? Let him win so easily? He's already won. Driven me to the wall. There's nothing I can do. There must be something. Bankruptcy. Disgrace. If you'd just stop feeling sorry for yourself and really work at it, you'd find a way out. How? Don't ask me. You're the brain. I tell you, it's no use. Only other way out would... Hey. Wait a minute. That's an idea. If Kendrick would fall for it. What is it? Yes, it's a possibility. What is? What are you talking about? You'll see if it works. Have to figure out how to present it to Kendrick. He might just go for it. He just might. Well, there's the proposition, Kendrick. What do you say? Is that all you have to offer? All? Look, it's all in your favor, everything the Sorry, way you... Sorry, Arsade, I'm not interested. But don't you see... It's not worth discussing. When you asked me to come over this morning, I thought you had a worthwhile offer. I can't waste my time on this. Good day, Osadi. No, Kendrick, wait. Perhaps your time isn't valuable, Osadi. Mine is. Good day again. I might have known he wouldn't be interested. I should have known. Why do I try to kid myself? No. Oh. What's the use? Dear Lois, it's no use. I knew that it wouldn't be, but I tried to pretend. I'm sorry about everything, but there's only one way out. You took the gun last night, but you didn't know I have another. Try to forgive me. Ray. Excuse me, miss. Yes? I'd like to see Mr. Kendrick. Hey, you know something? What? You look an awful lot like the falcon. Oh, it's the shape of my face. It's amazing. I've seen pictures of him. Uh, will you please tell Mr. Kendrick I'm here? He's expecting me. Your name? Michael Waring. Yes, sir. Ma- Ma- Michael Waring? You are the falcon. Yes, yeah, small world, isn't it? Now, will you tell Kendrick... I'm going out for a few minutes. If a Mr. Waring comes, ask him to wait. This is Mr. Waring. Oh, fine. I'm not going out after all. Come on in, Waring. Right. And if anyone else comes, I don't want to be disturbed. Yes, sir. Now, Waring, I guess you wonder what a man like me wants with a detective. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Happens in the best of families. What happens? Needing detectives. Oh, oh, that. I uh, thought you meant murder. I wonder how you knew. Oh, so that's why I'm here. Yes. The police just left. You read about it in the paper tomorrow. What'll I read? I have a nice little business here, Waring. Been growing steadily the past few years. This week, I drove my chief competitor, Raymond Orsati, to the wall. Bankruptcy. Well, bully for you. Got a call from him this morning. Could I come right over? I went. Uh-huh. What he offered was a merger. I don't need him. He needs me. Well? Well, I told him I wasn't interested and left. 
An hour later, he's found, shot through the head. Well, that's one way to get rid of competition. I didn't do it. All right, chum, all right. But the medical examiner says he got it right around the time I was there. But he was alive when you left. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Only I have no proof. But I have a theory, Waring. See what you think of it. All right. I say suicide. Was there a note? They didn't find any. But here's the way I see it. Orsati knew he was licked and blames me. He decides to give up and shoots himself, but he does it in a way to get back at me. He kills, uh, he calls me on a silly pretext, waits till I leave, and then kills himself. Intentionally leaving no note, so I'll be blamed. Hmm. You don't buy it? Oh, it's possible. Who found the body? A Leonard Stribling. He arrived an hour after me. You know anything about Stribling? I understand he's a bookie or soddy like the horses. All right, Kendrick, I'll drop round and see Stribling. You're playing a long shot, and I have an idea he's just the boy to quote me the odds. Hello, my name is Mike Waring. I'd like to see Leonard Stribling, please. I'm Stribling, the bookie... Look around you, Waring. Look around you. Can't you see this is a loan office? Oh, that's convenient. You clean them, lend them the money, and then clean them all over again. Get them coming and going. You huh? got the wrong Leonard Stribling. Didn't you find Raymond Osadi's body? So what? I've got the right Leonard Stribling. Look, I don't know what you want, Waring, but whatever it is, you're wasting your time. The law's had me on the grill already, and I'm clear. Osadi was killed an hour before I went up to his place, and I can account for every second of that hour with witnesses. So you didn't kill him. What's the chances he killed himself? Suicide? Mm hmm Are you sure there wasn't a note? Who are you working for, Waring? Insurance company? What insurance company? Well, Sally's. He had a 30 grand policy, didn't you know? Oh, I'm just beginning. Tell me more. No. Oh. You tell me. Who are you working for? That's well, no secret. Kendrick. Kendrick, huh? Mm -hmm. Good. Very good. You like that? Uh, come on in here, Waring. Okay, and... Now, look, uh, Kendrick is in this kind of deep, hmm? So? Well, I uh, suppose there was a note. A suicide note. I don't say there was, but if there was, that'd be all the proof Kendrick would, would need that he didn't knock off Orsati, right? Right. A note like that ought to be worth a lot to Kendrick. How much? Don't ask me. Kendrick's the only one who can answer that, but... Uh, before he starts figuring, maybe you'd better remind him that he's not the only one who'd be interested in the note. Who else? Aside his widow. Why, suicide clause? You guessed it, chum. The clause is in effect. If Osadi killed himself, the insurance is void. Meaning that Mrs. O is out a cool 30 grand. Mm -hmm. I get the picture. Good. Show it to Kendrick. He may appreciate art, too. <laughs> Osati? Yes. My name is Mike Waring. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. May I come in? What's it about? Your husband's death. I don't want to think about it anymore. You'll have to go. Oh, I know how you feel. But before I go, I thought you might like to know I've just seen Leonard Stribling. What of it? He tried to sell me your husband's suicide note. What? Yes, Mrs. Osati. Stribling says your husband killed himself. And he's dickering with you to sell you the note so you can cash in on the insurance. That's a lie. I haven't seen Stribling. Well, then you will. He wants to get us bidding against each other. What's your interest in the note? Well, it could save me a lot of trouble. If you buy it, you're just going to wind up in a jam with the insurance company. What an awful thing to say. To suggest that I do such a thing. It isn't enough what I've gone through. You have to come here and make such accusations. I didn't accuse. I advised. Get out of here. Yeah, sure. So long. Marbury. Marbury, come here. Yeah, Mrs. Osadi. What's the trouble? A man just left, Michael Waring. You can catch him before he reaches the street. I want you to see that he doesn't get to Stribling. If he tries to stop him, I don't care what you do, only stop him. You understand? <laughs> Whip. 
Has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip. Tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip. Only one of its kind. Miracle Whip. Best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip is the only one of its kind. Because it's different, a different type of salad dressing, made from a secret craft recipe. Miracle Whip combines the best qualities of boiled dressing and old-fashioned mayonnaise. So it's truly distinctive and delicious, with a flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. Try it, won't you? One taste will tell you why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. <laughs> Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Ten minutes have passed since Lois Orsati ordered Marbury to keep Mike from stribbling. Now, in a restaurant, Mike enters a phone booth and put in a call to his client. As he dials, Mike looks through the glass door and sees Marbury earnestly studying the pages of a telephone book and from time to time shooting glances at Mike that are meant to be unnoticed. Hello. Kendrick. Yes. Mike Waring. Oh, yes, Waring. Any luck? Yeah, you were right. Looks like Orsati killed himself. I knew it. But you were also wrong. What's that? You said Orsati didn't leave a note because he wanted you blamed. Uh Uh-huh. Well, there is a note. There is? So Stribling claims. So what becomes of your theory? Well, it's still suicide. But Stribling told the police there wasn't any note. Yeah, because he wants to peddle it to the highest bidder. Oh, but who else would be interested? Mrs. Orsati... I tried to talk her out of the deal, but no dice. She put a tail on me. What? Yeah, a flat-faced Joe who's making such a production of being inconspicuous that he stands out like an overcoat in July. He's right outside this phone booth waiting to pick me up again. What are you going to do? Have dinner. I'm hungry. All right, Waring, but uh, about that note, I'm willing to pay. I don't like being involved with murder. And I don't like blackmail. I'll go up and see Stribling as soon as I finish dinner. And the man who's following you? Well, if he's still with me after dinner, I'll call him on it. If he's as bad a liar as he is a tail, I should learn plenty. All right, chum, what are we playing? Huh? You've been following me ever since I left Osadis. You own the sidewalk? Well, considering taxes, sometimes I wonder. You want to walk, you walk. I want to walk, I walk. It doesn't say somebody's following somebody. All right, walk. I'll wait here. I'll walk when I feel like it. You mean when I feel like it. Now, look, chum, I've been in this racket long enough to know when I'm being tailed. In that case, you've been in the racket long enough to be familiar with one of these. Oh, gun? Yes. Well, turn around. Go on. Now... Start walking. Where to? Straight ahead. Remember, I'm right behind you. Well, under the circumstances, I'm not likely to forget. You know, I'm sorry you're so attached to me. I'm really not your type at all. Maybe you have a point. Turn into that alley. All right, now stop. I have an idea this is the part I don't like. Don't like? You love it. This is where I leave you. That's where you want it, isn't it? Well, yes, but... Only before I go, I better say goodbye like so. Oh. All right, pal, on your feet. Uh, oh, hello, officer. Come on, get up. Oh, well, I'll try. Them is can't handle it, shouldn't touch it. What? You heard me. You think I'm drunk? No, that aroma issuing from you is doubtless genuine attar of roses. What? Oh, yeah, he must have doused the stuff on me. Oh, you didn't drink it. Somebody doused you. Look, officer, I was sapped. Here's the lump if you want to feel it. Hey, neat job right back of the year. Maybe I was wrong. Yeah, maybe. What time is it, officer? Uh, A little after eight. Then I've only been out a few minutes. There may still be time. Huh? The thug obviously works for Mrs. Orsati. I thought I could scare her into tossing in her hand, but the strong arm act means she's shooting for the pot. That means I've got to work fast. What'd you say? She wants to beat me to a deal with Stribling. But if she gets that note, I'm cooked. When the gavel comes down, I have to be a high bidder. I've got to get up there. All right, pal, run along. You're not drunk. You're crazy. Hello. 
medicine department. Callahan 308, just a moment, I connect you. Yes, sir, now what can I do for you? Uh, what apartment is Stribling's? I want to talk to him. I'm afraid that is impossible, sir. He's not seeing anyone. But he'll see me. I do not think so, sir. Why not? Mr. Stribling is dead. That's right, Mrs. Osaki. What do you want this time? The thug. Where is he? Thug? The character who followed me when I left here before. I don't know what you're talking about. You do know what I'm talking about. He didn't tail me here. He did tail me from here. You must be the link. Now, see here, Mr. Waring. Yeah, I know, I know. This is no way to talk to a poor bereaved widow. But it so happens I've just been slugged by the poor widow's gorilla. And a thing like that doesn't put me on my best behavior. Now, where is he? Look, if you don't stop bothering me, I'm going to call the police. Oh, don't bother. They'll be around. I've already talked to them. You what? I told you you were flirting with trouble. Well, the trouble's here. There's been a murder. Murder? Yeah, murder. And your playmate may have some of the answers on it, so where can I find him? How many times do I have all to right, tell you? All right, all right. I keep thinking you listen to reason, but I see you're determined to do it the hard way. So I might as well run along. I'm just wasting my time here. I'm glad you finally realized that. Goodbye, Mr. Wehren. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yes, Waring. I've been trying to reach you. I um, want to know what I owe you so we can settle up. What, you mean I'm canned? No, it's just I don't need your services anymore. How come? Uh, have you seen Stribling tonight? Yeah. Well, didn't he tell you? No, he's not in a talkative mood. What should he have told me? About the note. What about it? I got it from him. You what? I have Orsati's suicide note. Got it from Stribling tonight. So you can see, as far as you're concerned, the case is closed. Well, maybe, Kendrick. But as far as you're concerned, believe me, it's just starting. This is Ed Hurley here again, friends. I do want to tell you something I'm sure you mothers especially will want to know. It's how to get the finest cheese food you can buy for your family. It's simple, really. Just be sure you buy Velveeta, Kraft's delicious pasteurized processed cheese food. Velveeta tastes good, and it's so good for you, too. For Velveeta is rich in important food values from milk, and it's as digestible as milk itself. So it's perfect any time for snacks, sandwiches, and grand hot dishes. Try it, won't you, Mother? Make Velveeta your handy helper. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta, the pasteurized processed cheese food of top quality, made by Kraft. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. It is 20 minutes since Kendrick told Mike over the phone about having Orsati's suicide note. And since he has the note, Kendrick thinks he no longer needs Mike. But Mike has different ideas on the subject, and he's gone over to Kendrick's to present them. So you say you bought the note from Stribling? That's right, Waring. I don't see why you're so excited about it. No? No, the note's conclusive. Unmistakably in Orsati's handwriting. All right, Kendrick. You've proved you didn't kill Orsati. Now, what about Stribling? Huh? What about him? I suppose you don't know that he was killed tonight. What? Good heavens. Yes. You walk out of one murder rap right into another. So it looks like my services are still very much required. You're not joking? When I work for Yox, Kendrick, I pull cuter stuff than this. What'll we do? First, a quick run-through to see where we stand. Like, why did you go up to Stribling's? I told you I'd handle it. He called me right after you did. Wanted to know how much I'd pay. He claimed Mrs. Orsati had offered 15000 I offered twenty. And you took it right over to him? That's right. When'd you get there? Around 7.30. How long did you stay? Five, ten minutes. Oh, great. You were there right around the time he was killed. Oh, no. The neighbors heard the shots. He was alive when I left. Yes, and was killed right after, 7.40. You're in a rut. Orsati and Stribling. Right back where you started, only this time there's no note. There may be another difference, too. Oh, what's that? It was known that I was up at Orsati's. Possibly no one knows I went to Stribling's. I know. Except you. Uh, look, I'm scared to death of a murder charge, Waring. I paid 20000 already to clear myself of one. 
Uh, how much do you want? You save your pennies, Kendrick. I'll work for my 50 a day plus expenses. And if I can't clear you that way, you better have cash on hand for a good lawyer. You've got to clear me. All right, then let me do it my way. Now, I'm going to make one last attempt at getting Lois or Sadi to talk. Oh, and you better come with me. I want to keep my eye on you. Why? Because Mrs. Orsati has a gorilla working for her. And if she gets the idea you have the note, he may come calling. And take my word for it, Kendrick, you wouldn't enjoy the visit. All right, here we are, 412. Now, remember, Kendrick, let me do the talking. All right, Willie. Now, just one thing before we go in. Did you ever meet Stribling before tonight? No. Why? Oh, good. Let me... Oh, not you again. Yes, and this time I'm coming in. I, I see you are. What do I have to do just to... Just be your charming self. All right, let's get this over with once and for all. That suits me fine. You know Mr. Kendrick? Yes, I know him. He killed my husband. Now, see here, Mrs. Osari. I'll handle it, Kendrick. Mrs. Osari, I told you your husband killed himself. Now we have proof. Then Kendrick drove him to it. It was strictly business up and up if your husband wasn't uh, Kendrick, I'll handle it. Sorry. Mrs. Osari, your husband killed himself. We have a note to prove it. You have it? Yes, right here. Uh-uh, no, don't touch. But you can see it's in your husband's handwriting. Where did you get it? From Stribling. You killed him for it. Who told you he's dead? The police were here. Oh, I see. Yes, they were here, all right. It's not enough I've lost a husband. No, no, all day long, you and the police and the police and you. Oh, that's too bad. You know, I could have more sympathy with you if you weren't involved with that gorilla. And if you didn't lie about your dealings with Stribling. I didn't have any dealings with Stribling. He said different. He was lying. I doubt it. He wouldn't have closed a deal with us until he'd heard your last offer. He didn't close the deal. You killed him. That's how you got the note. What makes you so sure? Because he obviously was killed for the note and you've got it. Well, that's nice going, Mrs. Osani. But there's one hitch. What's that? Kendrick never met Stribling before. So when he bought the note, how do we know he bought it from Stribling? What? Welling. You mean that wasn't Stribling? Someone could have killed Stribling for the note, then sold it to you pretending to be Stribling. But who? Well, obviously not you, Mrs. Osada. You couldn't have masqueraded as a man. But your gorilla... I've told you. You told me you don't know the gorilla. But there's a good possibility that he's a murderer. Now, if you want to keep on covering for him, you may wind up as an accessory. I didn't have anything to do with the murder. But you did have something to do with the murderer. And if you don't talk now, we'll still prove it when we find him. After all, I've seen him. I've described him to the police. Now it's just a matter of time. What do you want me to do? Tell us his name. Tell us where we can find him. All right. But you understand I didn't know he was going to kill Stribling. Uh-huh. Stribling phoned me. Said he had something that I might be interested in. I hired Marbury to find out about it, and that's all. Marbury? So that's his name? Yes, Jack Marbury. Right. But I didn't know he'd commit murder. I'm still not sure that he did. All I know is when you came, I ordered him to follow you. Later, he called back, said he followed you home. Home? That's what he said. And then he said he went up to Stribling's, but just as he got to the door, he heard a shot. Oh, he heard the shot. That's what he said. Looks like you've heard it, Waring. He was lying to her. He went up, killed Stribling for the note, sold it to me. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Where can we find him, Mrs. Osadi? Well, perhaps if you try... You're looking for me. Marbury! Reach, all of you. I saw Waring come in here, so I went around the back. I thought you might need me, sweetheart, but I was wrong. You don't need me. What you need is a good smack in the teeth. Waring is going for it. Yeah, now's my chance. Hey. Good, Waring. You knocked him out. But he's not. Not the one who sold you the note? I didn't think he would be. But you said... I know what I said, because I was trying to catch a murderer. And you know, Kendrick, looks like I did. Yes? Who? Now, Kendrick, it's obvious. The broken-hearted widow, Lois Orsati. Here. All right, send him in. Hello, Waring. Come in. Sit down. Thanks, Kendrick. Well, I got the whole story out of her at headquarters. Good. Uh, one thing I still don't understand, Waring, and uh, maybe you can explain. What's that? Why'd she do it? The note was what everyone was after. Killing Stribling didn't get it for her. She wanted the note because she'd lose 30000 if it fell into your hands. Precisely. But Stribling called her... Told her you had offered 20,000 cash. Yes. Well, she couldn't see topping your bid. 
But she'd have left out a 30 wouldn't be worth the risk. Mm -hmm. But she knew 20,000 in cash would be changing hands at Stribling's. So she went there with a gun to collect it. She figured if she couldn't protect her 30, she'd settle for your 20. I see. She knew Stribling would be in no position to call Copper, so it seemed safe. Only he put up a struggle and she had to shoot him. Uh huh. And just how did you know it was she? Well, first of all, I didn't think it was you. <laughs> Flattering. Why not? Well, you were just trying to clear yourself of one murder app. I couldn't see you exposing yourself to another just to wipe out the first. Very well, you've cleared me. Uh, still, that doesn't prove... Well, you didn't do it. I knew Marbury didn't. So... How'd you know Marbury didn't? Well, because Stribling was killed at 7.40, and it so happens that at that exact time, Marbury was sitting across from me in a restaurant keeping an eye on me. Oh. Mm -hmm. So that left Mrs. Orsati. Of course, there was the outside chance that the job was pulled by someone not directly involved in the case. But I squashed that by giving Mrs. Orsati a chance to finger Marbury. And she fell for it. Well, she figured the more fall guys she had lined up, the safer she'd be. But when she tried to place Marbury at Stribling's at the time of the shooting, that proved she was lying. Very good, Waring. Very good indeed. And now, uh, here's your check. Thank you. And I guess that's just about all, huh? Uh-huh. Oh, uh, just uh, one more thing. Uh, what's that? So what's the name of that cute little secretary of yours? Her name? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's Mrs. Kendrick. Oh. Well, as you were saying, Kendrick, I guess that's just about all, huh? So long. <laughs> Friends, America's defense program has placed on the Red Cross one of the greatest responsibilities it has ever had to assume. Now, in addition to day-to-day -to -day aid to the sick and injured, the Red Cross must extend its services to the men of our growing armed forces in camps and hospitals, at home and overseas. Now, too, the Red Cross must recruit, train, and equip millions of home defense volunteers in first aid and home nursing. And the Red Cross system of blood banks must be expanded to meet greater civilian and military needs. That's why Red Cross needs your help. By giving as generously as you can to the Red Cross, you are helping to mobilize for the defense of your family, your community, your country. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.